the way that reputation and identity works in the real world is like, okay, you're given, you're given a name at birth. Like you didn't, you know, you didn't choose that, but you know, most people are fine with that. I think that's okay, but it's a government issued identity that you have. Um, and then, you know, when you think about reputation, there's, um, you kind of like opt in, right? Like we kind of think about LinkedIn as probably like one version of our reputation where that's our work reputation. We have different types of reputation, but like, you know, as an example, our work reputation is whatever we decide to put into LinkedIn. And we can be like, oh, you know, Maria, like she studied political science and computer science. And like, you know, she worked at Microsoft and these are like lines that we can have. And then other people read those lines and make a determination on whether or not that's a good fit for whatever work that they have. Um, so that's kind of how things work in the real world. And, and that's because like, you know, when I work at Microsoft, no one's like writing that down, right? Like no, there's no like ledger that's just like jotting down like, oh, Maria worked at Microsoft or like Maria, like, you know, I don't know, went to college. This is what she studied. Like none of those things are like written in a place that's very easily accessible, but what's kind of funny about blockchain is like actually everything is written on the blockchain when you do something on it, right? So like when I decide, you know, when someone decides to like mint a crypto punk, like that is a line that's just automatically written. No one opted in. It's just, it's there and it's actually openly accessible to everyone. When you decide to like become a liquidity provider into a certain pool, that's just written, you don't opt in, everyone just knows about it. Um, and so this, this kind of reputation is just like floating in the ether in crypto. And, you know, I, I think really what, it, what is really interesting is that because it's all kind of written down, um, that reputation is, is open for everyone to, to look at and for everyone to, um, to access. And so, you know, again, as a just as an example, if you were in early, um, let's say you were like an early uh, board ape, you know, purchaser, um, you, you kind of know you like you, you actually can tell exactly based on the blockchain, like who who was an early, you know, owner of board ape and who wasn't. And so you could theoretically issue an NFT to people who were early in board apes. And you can call that group like the OG board apes, right? That could be an NFT that denotes some sort of reputation. Um, and you could say that like, oh, you know, if you were early in board apes, that means that you were into NFTs, you know, around that point in time in 2021, um, that you were early in spotting a trend and that like, you know, maybe, maybe that says something about your judgment about NFTs. I don't know if it actually does, but like, maybe it does, you know, like someone can make that argument. Um, in which case, like, you know, like perhaps that group of people, like perhaps people who own that NFT that denotes that part of the reputation can access, um, either a new collection or maybe they can be, um, you know, or they can be like investment d members of like an NFT investment DAO and like they get special voting privileges. You know, it's just kind of like the, the, the options are endless, right? It's whatever value you attribute to that action. Um, but I think just the fact that like everything is published on chain and everything is out in the open makes reputation and identity, um, a much more public thing on, in, in crypto. And that, that, um, you know, that is basically is, is just not something that exists in the real world. And so that's pretty interesting as well, especially when you think about like DAOs, um, and the way that they want to reward contributors. They don't need to track who contributed what. They can kind of like look on chain to see what happened. Um, they can also say like, oh, if you, you know, if you were really active in governance and other DAOs, then you're welcome to our DAO because you're probably going to be a really active governance participant. Um, and so all of these things are just like super, super easy to do in the Web3 world. Yeah, I think it's something that us at Unstoppable Domains is thinking a lot about in how you can prove and track the contributions you make on chain and and make that more accessible to other 
protocols, other applications, decentralized applications, so that they can start identifying you as you know uh, a, a, a name on the blockchain and then offer you certain, whether it's a promotion or it's an access or you know any anything that's really up to the the creative imagination, how you can start offering things to people based on what they've done provably. So it it brings up really interesting use cases and it's good to see people are starting to work on them. You're listening to the Unstoppable Podcast, the go-to place for everyone to learn about the latest innovations in Web3, NFTs, and the decentralized web. Welcome to the Metaverse.